I've got a nice video to show you guys today. So it's a differential equations which was found on the GRE. Well, the math GRE subject test. So you might ask, well, what's the GRE? Well, it stands for the Graduate Records Examination and it's used by some universities in the United States for acceptance into their graduate programs. And then I'd also like to point out that the channel assistant, Justin, is streaming his GRE prep two times per week on the second channel, Math Major. So if you're interested in joining him in this journey, make sure to check that out. There should be a link in the description. Okay, so let's see what we've got. We've got 2x times y times y prime equals sine of x minus y squared. We immediately see that this is a first order nonlinear differential equation. And it's also not a separable differential equation. You can check that it's not separable. But the fact that it's nonlinear and non-separable means that there's probably some sort of trick to make it simple because otherwise it's really easy to write down a differential equation with those classifications that has no analytic solution. So immediately we should start looking for a trick. And I think if you look pretty closely, you can see one, and that is the derivative of y squared is equal to two times y times y prime with the chain rule. So let's maybe note that first and see what that does for us. So like I said, the derivative with respect to x of y squared equals two times y times the derivative of y with respect to x, like I said, by the chain rule. And you can kind of think about it like this. The function y squared depends on y, but that depends on x. And so we've got this like tree of functional dependence that would give us the sort of chain rule type result. Okay, so that motivates us to make a change of dependent variables. Let's set z equal to y squared and note that z prime, which is the derivative of z with respect to x, is equal to 2y y prime. And that'll allow us to write this in terms of x and z instead of x and y. So let's see what it looks like. We have x times z prime, that would be this term right here, equals the sine of x minus z. Okay, so next thing that I would do is maybe move this z over. That gives me x times z plus z equals sine of x. And then this is actually almost in the form of a first order linear differential equation that we have a formula to solve if we've taken that kind of class. Notice that we could write this as z prime plus one over x times z equals sine of x over x. And then from here, we would maybe call this function one over x, capital A, this function sine of x over x, capital B, and then we have an immediate solution, which is given by z equals one over alpha times a constant plus the integral of alpha times b dx, where alpha is equal to e to the antiderivative of a dx. So this isn't exactly the strategy we're gonna use here. But just if you're interested in seeing such a strategy, I've actually like got some differential equations videos on the channel where you can find that sort of build up here. Okay, so that being said, if we don't know that, we'd probably try to take this left-hand side and see if we could write it as the pure derivative. And we can, and maybe the easiest way to do that is to take this, and instead of having just plus z, it's plus x prime times z. Because the derivative of x with respect to itself is really just one. And so that is exactly the same as what we had before. And now this looks like the product rule. In fact, it looks like the derivative with respect to x of x times z. And then we have that's equal to sine x. So from here, we have x times z is equal to a constant. I'll maybe call that constant c minus the antiderivative of sine x, which is cosine x. Then I can maybe say z is equal to that constant minus cosine of x all over x. But that's not quite my solution because I made this substitution at the beginning, z was equal to y squared. 
So that means y is equal to the square root of this whole thing. So I have the square root of c minus the cosine of x all over x. Let's put a nice box around that as that is our final solution to this differential equation. So if you'd like to see some more differential equations, I've got a really nice video that I did pretty recently that should be on the screen right now. Make sure to check that out. And that's a good place to stop. Oh,